Hello, Money Show Universe. It is my pleasure to welcome Nico and Miles to the Virtual Expo today. With almost 60 years of combined experience in the mineral exploration and mining industry, these guys of Argentina Lithium Energy Corporation are here to discuss how the company is focused on acquiring high quality lithium products in Argentina and advancing, advancing them towards production in order to meet the growing global demand for the battery sector. Gentlemen, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, combined 60 years of experience makes me feel a little old this morning here in wet Vancouver, but uh, hello everybody. Welcome to our presentation. Uh, I'm the president and CEO of uh, Argentina Lithium. Miles is the vice president of exploration. Um, we have a very unique company here with Argentina Lithium and Energy Corp. We've got uh, Argentina arguably is the probably is the best place in the world to search for and to make discoveries in many minerals, but especially so in the lithium space. And we'll see that in, in our presentation. We've, uh, with uh, our presence in Argentina and, our, and, and uh, having been there for nearly 30 years, uh, I think you'll find that we've got very, that we, our company, sorry, is very well positioned to take advantage of this and to come up with some very, very, uh, you know, spectacular uh, lithium discoveries. Here's uh, our cautionary statement. I do encourage everybody to uh, have a look at the, this uh, later on and read it carefully. Also, I should add that this presentation that we're uh, giving today is posted on our company's website. So feel free to visit there and download it from there. Argentina, as I said at my opening, is, are, is probably the best place in the world to prospect and look for new uh, lithium discoveries. The lithium, the northern part of Argentina, the uh, northwestern, the eastern part of Chile and the southern part of Bolivia there, as you see in this map, form what's called the lithium triangle. Now, the lithium triangle is significant because it produces nearly half of the world's lithium in this space. And on top of that, it hosts nearly 60% of the world's known lithium reserves. But what's key is that the bulk of that rests in Bolivia and in Chile, not in Argentina. Argentina is a country that's very much underexplored. It only opened up uh, its uh, investment laws to allow foreign investment in the mining sector uh, in the early 90s. And as such, has a lot of potential to make new discoveries that simply haven't been searched for yet. So this is where we are focused on. Um, the lithium that's found in these parts of the world is typically found in salt lakes, also known as salars or in brines. Argentina produces 10% of the world's lithium, is a top five producer, but you know, as Argentina definitely has potential to, to move much higher in that ranking. This whole region is very interesting because it's close to Chile. It also has a proximity to rail, water, roads, and power. And the government, I should add, both the federal and the provincial government are uh, very much encouraging and very supportive of developing the, um, the lithium uh, industry within uh, the uh, country of Argentina. The company itself is managed by Grosso Group. Grosso Group is headed by Mr. Joe Grosso. Grosso Group has been involved um, in the Argentina since back in 1993 when uh, uh, foreign investment was uh, opened uh, up in Argentina. Uh, we are known as uh, pioneers in that country and uh, have had actually a lot of success uh, in the last uh, 30, almost 30 years there. Our track record includes uh, two producing mines, uh, Guacamayo and Chinchillas mine that we've made in uh, sister companies. We've discovered the Navidad silver deposit, which is arguably the world's largest uh, undeveloped uh, silver deposit and the Amarillo Grande brand new uranium vanadium district in southern Argentina. Now this is a, a batting average, so to speak, that not many uh, management groups uh, can speak of. Uh, it's it's uh, very rare to see something like this, but uh, we've uh, we've you know we've had a lot of uh, we have a very talented team and uh, have had a lot of success. More specifically. Uh, Joe Grosso, who is also our chairman and CEO, is also the president and founder of Grosso Group. Joe Grosso is uh, has is, um, been inducted in Argentina's Mining Hall of Fame. He's been Mining Man of the Year in Argentina. He definitely lends our company uh, a tremendous competitive advantage in Argentina through the Grosso Group. Grosso Group is extremely well known and extremely well respected in that country. Miles, who's on the 
on the call here with us today. He's um, a geophysicist by training. He's joined us just the last couple of months, but uh, he's been a very welcome and key addition to our team. And uh, he's, uh, you know, we're excited to have him. And then I'm sure he's excited to be on board as uh, we embark on uh, making some new uh, lithium discoveries. Um, for as a background, uh, for those who may not be aware, the lithium battery market, well, the lithium is, is definitely in high demand right now because of the, the demand for lithium uh, batteries. Uh, China is one of the number one places in the world that's uh, hunting the world for lithium. There's not a lot of lithium, not enough lithium really to go around to satisfy demand. And we're seeing the price of lithium really beginning to skyrocket. In fact, this morning, uh, I took a look and the price of lithium was uh, at 200,000 uh, Chinese yuan per uh, ton for lithium carbonate, which is about $30,000 a, a ton uh, in US dollars. So it's uh, appreciated uh, on a logarithmic scale. So it's up, you know, hundredfold percent. And this is uh, a map that depicting our projects within the lithium triangle. And uh, well, we've got just under 60,000 hectares of claims here, uh, all strategically located, but to give you a, a better and more concise overview, I'm gonna pass the, the torch over to uh, Miles. Miles. Thank you very much, Nico. Okay, so we're looking at uh, the northwest corner of Argentina, and uh, I'll focus on our, our, our primary exploration projects uh, for this coming work season, but I'll also cover in this presentation uh, the, the two other uh, projects, which are more um, sort of more grassroots. So in the north, we have uh, Rincon West, which is our, our main focus. And you'll see that we have um, uh, excellent infrastructure there. The, the, largest, um, the largest town in the Altiplano of, of um, Argentina is San Antonio de los Cobras. That's about one and a half hours drive uh, to the east of us. And you can see it in the map there. And uh, we have the um, uh, a, a provincial highway, actually international highway, which crosses just north of our Rincon uh, West project and uh, goes down through Chile to the uh, ports on the Pacific coast. So uh, when we get to a uh, production stage on the project, uh, we expect uh, we'll be able to do a very um, efficient export of product. Uh, very close to that highway, we have um, a major power corridor as well. So we have a, a, a grid power close to our, our primary exploration project. There's also a rail line. It's an international rail line that goes down to Antofagasta on the, the Pacific coast of Chile, which passes uh, south of Rincon. It's about 30 kilometers south. And it actually goes through another one of our projects, which you can see on that map, our, our Positos project, which I'll, I'll cover briefly. Um, anyway, so uh, I'll, I'll discuss more in detail why uh, Rincon looks so good. But while we have this image open, I'll just uh, talk about the setting of the other projects. Um, so going south from Rincon West, we have Positos. That's a, a, like an early stage exploration project that has the rail line going through it. Down near the border with Catamarca province, we have the Antifaya uh, North project, and I'll discuss that in detail. That's our second uh, focus project. And then down at the bottom of the map, we have our Inca Wasi um, Solar project. It's close to the, the town of Antofagasta de la Sierra in Catamarca. Catamarca is a pro mining province. It has very easy access, and it's we have essentially the, the whole basin and that's uh, another um, sort of a grassroots exploration uh, project. Uh, Nico would you advance the slide please? Yeah. So um, just it's taking a while to refresh. There we go. Okay so now we're looking at the setting of Rincon West. Now the Rincon Solar it, it's a very mature solar with two other exploration companies uh, working on the solar. They are Rincon Limited which is in the central portion of the Solar and Argosy uh, Lithium who are, or Argosy Mining, who are on the, the east flank of the Solar, we're on the west flank of the Solar. Uh, what's relevant here is the Solar has been drilled down to 400 meters depth. And uh, so the geology of the Solar is well known. They have um, 
you know, helite beds, that's um, salt beds, uh, tested right down to the, the base of the SLAR at 400 meters. And it's running um, uh, an excellent grade lithium top to bottom. So they're, they're getting very consistent grades of about 400 milligrams per liter of lithium uh, in the entire column of the SLAR. Um, we liked how, how that looks. Um, our property here on the west side of the SLAR is, um, we're covered with, um, with gravel and sands, uh, but we're on the same basin. We've done um, vertical electrical soundings, which have established that the brines uh, occur below the large, the large portion or, of our property at less than 100 meters depth. It's actually from uh, about, about 30 down to um, 90 meters depth below the surface of our property is where we expect to, to find brines. And so um, we're, we have a very good feeling that this property is going to be uh, an excellent producer. Um, uh, this kind of sediment cover is highly porous. It should present a good uh, pumping scenario for us. So for the next 12 months, what we intend to do is uh, a, a detailed and deep seeing uh, geophysical uh, campaign. I hope to get that running before Christmas. I, I want to, to image the entire property down to about 400 meters depth so we can see all the bedding, um, the more porous zones and the base of the SLAR with those images. and. Uh, I want to plan and execute five exploration holes on the property uh, as soon as we can after that geophysics is done. So that's a start date in perhaps March of next year, uh, which is still summer for us in Argentina. And so that will be diamond drilling. Um, tentatively right now, I'm planning those holes will be to 300 meters depth, but uh, our, our plan will be updated as we get the geophysics coming in. Um, anyway, it's an easy area to work. Um, this is what it looks like on the ground. Uh, this is the, uh, another geophysics crew doing the vertical electrical sounding. So it's, it's easy to, uh, to work. We can operate here year round. Um, it's very dry, um, infrequent snowfall in the winter. So we would have a snowfall maybe every three or four years. Um, and it, it, the snow basically evaporates directly off the surface. Um, so excellent place for year round exploration and to, to develop a, a production facility. Uh, speaking of production, our neighbors to the east, um, Rincon Limited, they already have a, a, a pilot plant operating on, uh, on the Solar. They're using um, a direct extraction technology, which is what we would intend. Uh, once we have our resource identified, uh, we will be looking at, uh, at uh, production solutions using the, the most advanced technologies, which would be um, selective lithium extraction or direct extraction. Um, I think that covers that. The next slide, please, uh, Nico. Yeah, should be coming. Thank you. Okay, so now uh, we're down, uh, this is the far, or no, this is the third property going, you know, kind of from the north. This is our Antifia North project. Now, uh, the Antifia Basin, it's a very long, Basin that 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 um, sort of cuts into uh, the northern part of Catamarca province. In the central part of that basin, uh, Albemarle, the, the world's largest producer of lithium, have done a lot of drilling and have identified uh, a mid-grade uh, resource of about 350 milligrams of uh, lithium in the brines there, in a basin which is at least 500 meters deep. Um, we are, are up on the northern part of the same basin, uh, mostly inside Salta province. And um, this area where we are has not been drilled. So uh, we've already done some geophysics in the area. I should actually point out we've got, a, this is a quite a large property. We've got about uh, just over 14,000 hectares here. So we, we did some uh, geophysics previously. This is a CSAMT survey, that's controlled source audio frequency magnetotelurics. Basically, we were looking at uh, mapping electrical resistivity with this image. So uh, this was a, a property on the west flank of the Solar, and we can see uh, conductive brines um, in, in a shallow uh, 
uh, part of the basin there and uh, potential high porosity zones at depth. Uh, so our plan is um, we added onto this property package uh, uh, a selection of properties located to the east here where we do not yet have geophysics. So we uh, intend to conduct uh, 50 line kilometers of transient electromagnetic, electromagnetic soundings to image top to bottom in the basin um, and then plan three drill holes on, um, on this property. And again, we'll get those completed within the next 12 months. Um, we would expect, this is a, a leading statement, but we would expect that uh, the, the brines that we drill here could have um, similar grades to what um, Albemarle has drilled uh, further south. Um, let's go to the next uh, slide, Nico. Okay, so this is uh, in the central part of Salta um, province. This is the Positos project. This is the one where the rail line right, runs right through the middle of our project and, and goes down to the Pacific coast. So this is, um, we're on the, the west flank of the Positos Solar. There hasn't been much historic exploration at Positos, and, uh, but it looks very good. We're, um, at this solar, we're just uh, to the east of the Arisaro solar, where there's a lot of exploration uh, being undertaken. Um, we've got a very large property here. It's uh, almost 16,000 hectares. And, uh, but we're viewing this as a, as a pure exploration place. So the first thing we'll be doing is uh, advanced geophysics. Again, this will be transient electromagnetic soundings, which should allow us to see, uh, I, I expect, uh, to 500 meters depth in this environment, we should be able to see um, zones with uh, conductive brines and uh, with some luck, the conformation of the bottom of the basin so that we can plan uh, our future drilling here. Currently for 2012, I do not have any drill holes planned here. Our focus is going to be imaging the basin. Uh, let me just see if there's anything I'm missing. Oh, there's a couple of other things. The, uh, there's uh, just on Positos, there is a population center 17 kilometers east of Positos. And uh, so that's also a railhead. Um, and there's a, a gas pipeline which goes by there and the, there's power lines. And so um, if we need uh, to heat anything in a production facility, gas is a, you know, natural gas is available. Uh, we don't have to build a whole lot of infrastructure. And for exporting product, uh, we could choose either road or rail for exporting down to a Pacific port. Um, okay, now we're looking at the Inkawasi project. So this is the fur furthest south project. This is about 25,000 hectares. We have the entire Inkawasi basin. Um, we've done sampling here, which uh, produced uh, attractive grades um, of lithium at surface, that was 400 milligrams per liter, uh, not at surface, but in eight meter deep holes. And our initial drilling, we recovered um, low grade brines in the initial drill holes. Now we had on, only shallow seeking geophysics. This predates my involvement with the company. So that the company drilled at that point with, with shallow seeing vertical electrical soundings. Uh, my plan for Inkawasi, I want to image the entire um, basin and identify new uh, deposits of brine, which we can then evaluate with drilling. Um, while we're just looking at this, if, if our listeners are, are looking at other players in the region, our Inkawasi project is immediately north of Lake Resources, a uh, catchy project. The, uh, we're actually in, a, in a, an extension, well, in, a second basin, it's, um, it would be a, sep a separate basin from the, the basin where Lake Resources is, but it's, it's on a similar um, geologic structure and it's another very large basin. Um, other factors which uh, are attractive about Inkawasi, it's relatively low elevation, it's about 3,200 meters elevation. And we're, we're very close to um, the major population center in the Altiplano of, um, of Catamarca, that's uh, uh, Antofagasta de la Sierra. So um, 
and, and it's uh, easy access. And even though we're a bit further south here um, and uh, the winters can be a bit colder, uh, we're low elevation and uh, very dry and easy access. So this is another area where it's very easy for us to work the year around. Um, do you think I've missed anything with any of those uh, properties, uh, Nico? No. Okay, so the next slide is uh, just our, our work schedule. So you can see that um, on Rincon West, uh, we hope to get the, the geophysics done, that's the trans and electromagnetic soundings completed uh, before the end of the year. Um, there, one of the reasons I favor that technology is it's extremely fast. So we can cover the entire Rincon Solar in about two weeks of work. Um, and then uh, in the new year, we will uh, uh, well finish evaluating that data and uh, drill five holes into the project. Um, that drilling should be completed in about six weeks time, uh, six weeks from start to finish, I should say. Um, with Antifia North, um, we need to uh, update our environmental permitting and resubmit it. And so uh, uh, I expect that we can only start the geophysics there in the new year. And, uh, but with our permitting, we'll be permitting the geophysics and the drilling together. And uh, I would expect that we can move the drill basically straight from the Rincon West project uh, down to uh, Antifia North and drill the next three holes. And so that would be um, uh, a bit more than a month of drilling there. And um, our focus uh, initially, and, and my, my work focus is on those two projects. Um, so the, the next two sort of uh, more uh, grassroots sorts of projects, that would be Positos and Inkawasi, uh, will be uh, completing the geophysics on those uh, after we finish the geophysics in the other areas, but likely at the same time that we're drilling so that uh, I can be spending my summer up there in the, the high plain of Salta, organizing drilling and geophysics and taking in the attractive scenery. Um, just a, an idea of investment, um, the geophysics uh, and the drilling at uh, Rincon West, we expect to invest about 1.3 million Canadian dollars in that. Um, so that's less than $100,000 for the geophysics and the remainder would be the drilling. And for the, the work at Antifia North, it's a bit more than 1.1 million Canadian dollars uh, for the a large amount of geophysics and three diamond drill holes. Um, anything you would like to add, Nico? Uh, no, nope, uh, not at this point. We'll just kind of move on and um, look at the capital structure of the company. We just got just over 50 million shares out. Uh, so very, uh, very tightly held company. More than half of these shares are held by uh, insiders, uh, friends and family of the, of the, of the management team. And our market cap is currently just, just over 25 million bucks. Um, we are, I, I would like to point out, we are doing a financing right now. We announced just under a $5 million Canadian financing. Uh, it's a share, it's an equity uh, financing at uh, 45 cents per, per unit with a 70 cent three year warrant. And the use of these funds is like basically to, uh, like Miles has outlined, is to ensure that we've got the funding to complete the two drill programs that are coming. Uh, the exploration and geophysics on, on the rest of the projects as well, and as well as um, to continue uh, advancing negotiations that we got ongoing for acquisition of other projects. We've been very fortunate in the last couple of years to have a very significant presence in, uh, in Argentina. Um, when the country basically shut, shut down during COVID, our team there was very active in, in searching and sourcing uh, hard to get uranium projects because uh, competition at that time actually became very, very low. Um, we're beginning to see the fruits of that. Uh, our recent uh, uh, acquisition of uh, Rincon West was such an attractive property, uh, very difficult to acquire. We've been able to acquire that. We've got more that we're negotiating uh, that, you know, hopefully we'll be able to finalize over the coming days. So Argentina Lithium has got, has got we've got uh, now after this financing, we've got the money, we've got the projects, 
we've got the team uh, with the experience uh, to not only navigate in Argentina, but a team that's been has a, a very, very exceptional track record in making discoveries and advancing them all the way up to production. And uh, we're basically getting the company ready for, uh, uh, you know, for making new discoveries in, in the lithium space. Very exciting. We're seeing a lot of foreign uh, uh, interest right now uh, coming into the Argentina lithium triangle. It's mainstream uh, business uh, headlines of uh, acquisitions and companies that are active there. And I, I'd have to say that our doors are being knocked on too. But at this point, I think we owe it to our investors to, uh, to execute on our exploration place because I think there's a lot of value to be unlocked here. And with that, I thank you all very much. And uh, if there's any questions, happy to answer any questions. Absolutely, thank you, Nico and Miles. All right, first question comes from Richard. Um, how do you compare to Abelmarl, I think I said that right, which I understand is a leading lithium producer? Well, they're, they're a very large company um, and uh, they've been at this for a long time. Um, and we are currently an exploration company with a view to being a, a production company in a few years time. Uh, Albemarle's got production facilities around all around the place. Their key production facility in South America is in Chile in the Atacama Desert. And uh, so uh, I mean, I've, I've worked adjacent to Albemarle's projects um, in Catamarca. And I'm aware that uh, you know, their focus is expanding production. Uh, and they were looking at, at at Catamarca and the Antifaya Basin for doing that. I'm not aware of their current plans, but uh, where they've been focusing their exploration now for the last uh, approximately five years has been in the Antifaya Basin where we have our Antifaya North project. Excellent, thank you so much. And the next question that came through is, which technology do you employ for imaging? Well, um, I've used Basically, every kind of geophysics, almost every kind of geophysics technology there is. I've, I've been doing this for uh, many companies uh, on many mineral projects and some oil projects for 35 years. What we're doing in, the, in these basins, our first pass of imaging will be transient electromagnetic soundings. So um, if someone's uh, interested in, in learning the details of this, they can contact me through our company. I'm, I'm delighted to talk about geophysics and exploration in general. Uh, but the transelectromagnetic soundings allow us to see um, uh, conductive brines at, at depths down to potentially a thousand meters depth. Um, I would lose interest to, in those brines at a depth like that. But uh, we have excellent imaging potential, say in the first 500 meters. Um, and uh, when we image like this, we can see the strata of the, the basin. Um, if the basin's not too deep, we can see the bottom of the basin and, um, and we can see uh, where it's more porous, less porous, and, and where the brines are potentially higher grade but based on electrical resistivity. Excellent, thank you so much. Well, those are the only two questions that have come in so far, but if anyone else watching has another question, please feel free to post them in the chat. We probably have a couple minutes left um, to potentially get to a couple more. So while we wait, any other thoughts? Well, the lithium space certainly has been quite uh, exciting in uh, the last uh, month or so. Um, you know, we, you can see it actually on this slide that I've got up on the, on the screen. Uh, uh, the, the, or demand that came in just after our acquisition of our Rincon West project and uh, just the, the premiums that are being paid for uh, having a presence in, in, in taking over companies or making bids to merge with companies that have a presence in the Argentinian portion of the lithium triangle. It's probably right now one of the hottest places in the world for, uh, for, for lithium exploration. And uh, we're fortunate to be there. Uh, we're clever actually to be there. And uh, I think uh, we've got a great future here ahead for Argentina Lithium and our shareholders. I'll add, um, there's a lot of interest from the oil companies now, uh, particularly in this part of, of Argentina. And uh, the oil companies have been coming in and, and looking at wholesale acquisitions of, of properties and, and lithium exploration companies. 
And uh, those companies tend to have deep pockets. Um, and I, I think that their viewpoint is that, uh, you know, drilling brines and drilling oil, there's uh, some overlapping in, uh, in knowledge base there. And I think their viewpoint is also lithium is a, an industry which is starting, say, 10 years ago from almost nothing. And it's a very, very high growth field. And the point that I would like to make uh, for the past few years, uh, working with another lithium company, we were focused in, in the, the, the anticipated boom between about 2020 and 2025. And, uh, and so the, the current uh, advanced projects were, were um, explored and, de and developed with a view to the, the boom that is now undergoing. But I think we anticipate that the industry will continue to boom. So I'm looking now at the boom period, say 2025 to 2030, and those exploration or those resources have not yet been identified what is required for the boom, so say five years hence. And so the development we're doing right now, we're looking to provide uh, the resources and the production facilities to satisfy that boom period. Thank you, gentlemen. We did have a couple other questions come in. First one is, you mentioned a significant holding by insiders. How would you describe market the market liquidity of your company? Well, we have a tremendous market liquidity. We trade anywhere from 2 million shares a day. Uh, and, and again, that's visible in the chart here a little bit, but uh, between a million and 2 million shares a day, it seems to be our average trading right now. I think that speaks for... Um, uh, the interest in, in, in not just in our company, but also in the lithium industry in general. So um, yes, we've gone from a very small and liquid company to a very uh, liquid company and uh, just beginning to get gain uh, presence in the uh, investment world. Excellent. Thank you. And one last question. Are you doing any research into alternative methods of extracting lithium from the brine? Yes, Brian, Miles. <laughs> well, we, we, we our, our focus is on the the geology and the exploration side, but we're in contact with several companies um, which are actually doing the research. We haven't yet partnered with the um, the, the company that that uh, we are likely to choose, say, um, but we're evaluating the different technologies. And I'll just make the point that this this field is advancing extremely quickly and there's several competing technologies I, I think that if you look at the conventional technologies which is um, you know, evaporation of uh, of brines you've got a, a tremendous loss of um, of lithium depending on your chemistry and it's a very slow process and, and there's an environmental impact uh, it's not huge but there is a um, an, an impact to having uh, that kind of production facility I, I think that the uh, as these direct extraction technologies come mm -hmm. online and uh, improve, uh, it will be markedly the, the way to go. Uh, I think that we'll see all the projects swinging towards direct extraction. There are so many benefits to, to doing extraction that way that you're, you're um, essentially extracting a brine, you're removing lithium and pota potentially potassium and perhaps other ions from the brine and re-injecting it into your uh, solar so you're able to, to improve the production on your, your solar because you're able to design flow within the solar. Um, and you have immediate, um, immediate uh, production capacity. You don't have to wait 18 months for your brines to evaporate and settle out certain types of salts. And then you can skim off uh, the next stage of your brine development. Um, I, I think that uh, direct um, extraction is absolutely the, the way to go forward, and we'll see um, the the costs of that kind of uh, extraction improve. Um, as I say, it's a very, very young technology, and they're making great strides in it. Thank you, Miles. And then one last question. What is the exchange you're listed on and the ticker? Oh, we're, stick, we're, we're listed on uh, TSX Venture Exchange. Our ticker is uh, LIT, and we're also listed on the OTC. Uh, the, the ticker is PNXLF. It's on the bottom uh, blue strip there of the, of the slide as well. 
Beautiful. Well, that puts us right over time. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us today and for a fantastic presentation with some insights into Argentina lithium and energy. We really appreciate your time being here. Thank you for the opportunity.